The Big Darts events are usually very well organised, but this PDC event went completely wrong. Today, we will show you where it went wrong and how this could happen. It's the PDC UK Open, a tournament that until 2019 was a battlefield for not only the tour card holders, but also amateur qualifiers. You might think that 128 refers to the number of tour card holders, but that's not the whole story. Players had to fight their way into this prestigious event by earning their spot on the UK Open Order of Merit. This Order of Merit wasn't about reputation, it was about cold hard cash. Players accumulated earnings by competing in special UK Open qualifier events. Now these qualifiers weren't exclusive to just tour card holders. Even PDPA associate members who had attended Q school but missed out on a card could enter the fray. From 2014 onwards, six of these qualifiers were held each year. The top 96 players on the table secured their place, but here's the twist. The top 32 got a direct ticket to the last 64, while the next 64 had to battle through the last 96 stage. It was a fierce competition, and the stakes were sky high. Leading up to the 2018 UK Open, it was anyone's game. Michael Van Gerwen had already claimed two titles, making one of them his 100th singles PDC victory. But players like Michael Smith and Gary Anderson weren't far behind. Corey Cagby even clinched his first PDC title, adding more unpredictability to the main. Yet what unfolded at the 6th and final qualifier that year would shock the darts world. As the last 32 faced off, it became clear that something extraordinary was happening. The race for those coveted low positions was neck and neck, with 20 players at £750 and 15 at £500. It was a financial standoff that would come down to tiebreakers. According to PDC rules, tied players would be ranked based on their earnings from the past four events. But if that couldn't break the tie, the main order of merit would step in. Crucially, if even that couldn't separate the contenders, a playoff would be organised. And that's when Christoph Rutaski, a name that would etch itself into Dot's history, did the unthinkable. He won his first PDC title on that final day, becoming the first Polish player to achieve this feat. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. As the dust settled on the last 32, something extraordinary was brewing. Something so controversial, it would forever change the way we look at the PDC UK Open. There were 23 players sitting comfortably with £750 in their pockets, having secured their place in the tournament. Benito van der Pass, Mink McGowan, Darren Johnson, John Part and Prakash Jiwa were among those who had successfully qualified, either by winning enough money in the previous events or through their high rank on the main order of merit. But the real intrigue lay just behind this group. A staggering 12 players found themselves tied for the 95th place, creating a deadlock that demanded a tiebreaker to determine the two lucky individuals who would claim those final spots. Tensions were running high and the pressure was mounting as they faced this do or die scenario. Further up the table, Ted Evans and Michael Rath of it, were locked in their own intense battle. Both had earned £1,500 and occupied the 64th place. But here's the catch. The timing of their victories was crucial. The player ranked 64th would bypass the first stage and go straight into the second round, while the 65th would have to start from the first stage. To resolve this, a decisive single game between Evans and Rastovitz was scheduled. The match was a roller coaster of emotions. Rastovitz started strong, winning the first leg, but then Ted Evans pulled off an incredible comeback, securing six consecutive legs and the coveted 64th place. But the drama didn't end there. Before this decisive game, Ted Evans had already won a direct playoff spot against Brett Claydon. So, why was this game between Evans and Rastovitz so crucial? It all came down to prize money. Now here's where the controversy truly unfolds. In the battle for the last two qualifying spots, there was a heartbreaking twist. Ten players found themselves tied, both in terms of earnings and their order of merit rankings. However, when the draw was finally released, seven out of the twelve tied players were conspicuously absent. Nicholas Bell, Brett Clayden, Robert Murujanovic, Stefan Niles and Luke Woodhouse were nowhere to be seen. While it was expected for Marianovic, who had not participated in the main tournament that day due to work commitments, the absence of the others was nothing short of shocking. It was confirmed that they had left the venue early, exiting the main qualifier before the crucial tiebreaker playoff. This unexpected departure left fans in the darts community in disbelief. 
It seemed that these players hadn't been fully informed about the playoff situation and their decision to leave left many infuriated with their sights set squarely on the PDC. Barry Hearn, the head of the PDC, responded to the brewing controversy. He stated that an announcement had indeed been made earlier in the day about the playoff situation. Hearn found it unbelievable that players who knew they were in contention for those coveted spots would simply leave without seeking clarification from the tournament director. To back up his points, Gerwin Price, a prominent Darts player chimed in. He confirmed that there had been an announcement before the start of play. His perspective was echoed by others who had attended the event. Luke Woodhouse, one of the absent players, took to Twitter to share his side of the story. He mentioned that he hadn't heard the announcement and hadn't received any phone calls or paperwork regarding the playoff. By the time the qualifier was underway, Woodhouse was already on his way home, a two hour journey from the venue. He expressed his frustration, feeling that his fair chance had been unjustly taken away. Barry Hearn, responded to Woodhouse's claims by reiterating his original point. He asked Luke why he'd left without approaching the tournament director, when it was evident that he was still in contention for a spot down the lower end of the table. The Professional Dart Players Association also weighed in on the matter. They tweeted that they had spoken to Luke and confirmed that the announcement had indeed taken place. They stressed that players should have been in attendance in case of such crucial developments. However, they also made it clear that they couldn't be responsible for the whereabouts of every player at such a pivotal point in an event. Woodhouse eventually responded, acknowledging that he now knew about the announcement and expressing his deep disappointment and frustration at the situation. It was a complex and emotionally charged episode that had left a bitter taste in the mouths of both players and fans. In the aftermath of this controversy, Luke Woodhouse went on to participate in the following year's UK Open and has been a fixture in the tournament ever since having secured a tour card. However, the playoff that unfolded during that fateful day in darts history left an indelible mark. The playoff itself went ahead with seven of the 12 players who remained. Jeff Smith received a bye, propelling him straight to the semi-finals where both winners would qualify for the UK Open. Adam Hunt managed to secure a 6-4 victory over Smith, earning his ticket to the prestigious event. Meanwhile, George Killington defeated Jim Walker with a 6-3 scoreline to join Hunt on the lineup. Interestingly, these playoff winners then engaged in a somewhat anticlimactic final, which served only to determine their draw numbers for the UK Open. One would be number 95 and the other 96. In the actual tournament held in Minehead, the outcome for Hunt and Killington was varied. Hunt exited in the first round, while Killington fared slightly better, advancing to the last 64 before succumbing to a 6-4 defeat. However, the 2018 UK Open turned out to be one of the strangest in PDC history. Unforeseen circumstances added more twists to an already dramatic tale. A massive snowstorm had descended upon the area, leading to the unprecedented decision to ban fans from entering the venue. This meant that the major tournament was played behind closed doors, creating an eerie atmosphere within the arena. The adverse weather conditions also made it incredibly challenging for many players to even reach the event, resulting in numerous withdrawals. Some players, in hindsight, may have been relieved that they weren't part of the controversial playoff in the first place. The multi-boardroom, where multiple games were played simultaneously, was so frigid that some players resorted to unusual attire for warmth. Mickey Mansell donned a beanie, while Mark Walsh opted for a hoodie. Michael Rastovitz, who had been involved in the playoff against Ted Evans to secure his bye, had to contend with more than just the cold. His luggage was lost in transit, forcing him to borrow a set of darts from Dave Chisnell. Despite these challenges, Rastovitz still managed to beat Simon Tate before getting his bye and ultimately losing to Corey Cadby. Rastovitz's opponent in the playoff, Ted Evans, also faced a tough break, losing his first game to Harry Ward. The UK Open qualifiers, marked by the controversial playoffs, have not been used again since 2018. Nevertheless, the PDC's rule for splitting ties in the order of merit remains similar, leaving open the possibility of more playoffs and dramatic moments in the future of darts. It's a reminder that in the world of professional darts, the unexpected is always just a throwaway. Don't forget to hit the bullseye so you never miss out on any of our amazing darts videos. See you next time.